Beloved brothers and sisters, it is indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whom all thanks and praise is owed to. No matter how much we thank Him, it will never be sufficient. We try our best and we should be constantly bearing in mind that whatever we have, He is the one who has provided. Whatever we have has been given to us as a test from Him in order to see how we utilize it for our benefit and the benefit of others. And at the same time, it is important to realize that we return to Allah, leaving behind absolutely nothing besides our deeds. Your wealth will remain, your family will remain. The health you had shall be gone totally. And everything you owned in this world shall be left behind. Your deeds will come with you. So let us do as many deeds and good deeds as we can, so that we can really be from those who are successful, not only in this world, but even in the next. Remember whatever Allah has ordained and whatever He has prescribed upon us, it is for our benefit and our good. Nothing is to our detriment. It is impossible for the Almighty to have instructed us to do that which is harmful for us. It is impossible for the one who loves us more than our own parents to have asked us to do something that is dangerous for us or detrimental. So when we are asked to reach out to others, remember, it is very important to dig deep in our pockets and to look into our homes and to see what we have, no matter what amount, but if it is done for the correct reasons with sincerity to please the Almighty, to reach out to fulfill the Almighty's instruction, then indeed we will have fulfilled our duty and we will have earned closeness to the Almighty. For this reason, when we say reaching out to others is extremely important, it is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has instructed it and He has kept our own happiness through reaching out to others. Reach out to your children by spending time with them, by being a good role model for them, by showing them the way and the path, by making choices for them in their early lives such that when they grow older, they will have the knack of making the correct choices. We should never make wrong choices for our children from a young age in a way that when they grow up, they have no idea how to make choices. So we will be able to reach out and help our children if we do fulfill the role that Allah has placed on our shoulders as parents and as adults. Reach out to our women by fulfilling their rights, by honoring them, by raising them to the platform that Allah has raised them upon, by not oppressing them, that is the way we reach out to our sisters and our women, by granting them what Allah has granted them, by involving them in whatever Allah has involved them in, and at the same time respecting them like nobody else has respected them. If you look at those before us, they have disgraced a female, and at the same time, they have made her believe and think that through that disgrace, she is achieving freedom. Whereas Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, no, we should honor the female and that is how we will reach out to her. May Allah make us from amongst those who can reach out to the women folk. We should reach out to the orphans and to the widows as well, reaching out to those and assisting them, even if it means through a prayer, even if it means through a donation, whether it be in a box that might be by the door of one of the masjids or it means a visit where we will offload that which we are not even using in our homes within the homes of those orphans. It is important. We have so much in our houses that if we were to declutter and if we were to take out only that which we have not made use of within the last year, we will find tons of items that will be of benefit to others who perhaps do not have. So I call on you to go home and to search in your cupboards, to search in your, to search in your home, to take out that which you are not making use of, to take out that which is excess and to donate it to a good cause. The Almighty will open your doors. Remember, you are not going to take anything into your grave from that which you have amassed besides the good deeds and that which you have deposited in the bank of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So may the Almighty make us from those who can reach out to the orphans, the homeless, the widows. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, the one who is striving to fulfill 
or to alleviate the suffering or to fulfill the needs of the orphans and the widows is similar to he who stands all night in prayer and he who fasts every single day. Imagine the reward of fasting every day and the reward of standing all night every night in prayer is achieved by reaching out to the widows and the orphans. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those. At the same time, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us reach out to those who are struggling across the globe. Today it has become so easy to reach out to those who are struggling, whether they be in Burma, whether they be in Bangladesh, whether they be in Sri Lanka, whether they be in Afghanistan or Iraq or Syria or Yemen. You name the countries, the names are increasing on a daily basis. There are organizations that work serving on humanitarian grounds, my brothers and sisters and yours across the globe. So it has become easy for myself to search for such organizations and to donate to that cause they will fulfill for me. Before it was much more difficult where people had to go out themselves. Today there are others who are doing that job just to ensure that they are genuine and legitimate. And if that is the case, then inshallah we should be assisting in that cause. How many of us are ready to assist even those in our own country, in this beautiful country, Allah has kept people on different levels of finance, different levels of need, different levels of independence in terms of need, because it is a test for both sides. A test for those who don't have to bear patience and to pray and a test for those who have to reach out to those who don't have and to protect themselves from arrogance to protect themselves from that pride because remember the days can turn at any moment we have seen people who have had a lot and at the same time overnight Allah decided to take it away they would suffer much more much more and in a greater way than those who have not had from the beginning because once you are used to a certain life it would be difficult to downgrade may the almighty grant us a luxurious life in the akhirah in the life after death and may he make us from those whose suffering is alleviated in this world and who help others to alleviate their suffering as well my brothers and sisters no matter what we say no matter what we say every one of us can do much more and we can improve and do better when it comes to assisting others and i call upon you to make life easy for those whom you live with to start with those whom you live with within your home within the parameters of the walls of your home make life easy for them whether they be a relative or a worker may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use us to create beauty and goodness in the lives of those whom we live with thereafter it is important for us to search search every single day for ways of improving ways of making the lives of others beautiful touching them in a way that they will remember touching them in a way that they will smile whenever they think of the goodness that has come to them from our direction and if that is the case and that is how a muslim should be then we should be the furthest away from harming people we should be the furthest away from creating difficulty in the lives of people if the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has stated in the hadith of abu huraira radiallahu an which appears in sahih muslim he says whoever alleviates the dire suffering of those who are suffering from amongst their brothers and sisters allah will alleviate their suffering on the day of judgment we need to know that the one who creates difficulty then what would happen allah may create difficulty for that person as well so in the same way whoever creates ease allah will create ease for them whoever creates difficulty we would not like it that Allah create difficulty in their lives. May the Almighty protect us. That hadith continues to say, whoever assists anyone from their brothers and sisters in any way, Allah will assist them in this world and in the next. And then the hadith continues to say, whoever treads a path seeking knowledge, whoever is treading a path of seeking knowledge, the Almighty, will definitely create ease in their path to paradise. And why is this mentioned in the same hadith? In the same narration that makes mention of reaching out to people, the Almighty says, if you make an effort and if you are treading a path in order to seek any form of knowledge, the Almighty will create ease in your path 
to achieving paradise. One of the reasons is you will only be able to fulfill the rights of others when you know what they are. You need knowledge. You will, be able, you will only be able to fulfill your acts of worship if you know what they are. You will only be able to understand and realize the value of others if you have knowledge as to what their value is. How would ignorance help me or you in any way? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cure us of ignorance. May He make us from those who can make an effort to learn more about this religion. Remember, if you are attending a Friday sermon, it is your duty to come early. It is your duty to sit and listen to the talk. It is your duty to take back some beneficial knowledge home. And it is your duty to share it with those who may not have been able to attend in terms of women and children. And it is our duty to ensure that we make use of the various lessons around us in the masajid. There are lessons of tafsir. There are lessons of hadith. There are beneficial lectures. How many of us make the time to go out and learn and seek knowledge? put it into practice and convey it to others. Well, that is the way you will be able to create ease on your path to paradise. May the Almighty grant it to us. We have seen many people suffering across the globe. If the Almighty had wanted, He would not have made them suffer. But as I said moments ago, the suffering is connected to the test for them and for us. How many of us have reached into our pockets and put a small donation into boxes that have passed us or into boxes that we see by the doors of the masajid. Sometimes the change that we have, the change that we have after making purchases in a big department store, that change can actually make a change. Subhanallah. So do not underestimate the value of the change that you get when you have made a small purchase at a convenience store. May we be able to be from amongst those who can make the right decisions as to how to help those who are suffering. It is important for us to know the organizations that we are giving towards and to make sure that they are genuine, legitimate, and they are approved by authority. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. When we say a friend in need is a friend indeed, it is also important for us to realize, don't run away from those who are in need solely because they are in need today, yet yesterday, when they were your close friends, then they were not in that need. It is a hypocrite who runs away from his friends when they are in need. And we would not like the same to happen to us. The day I am in need, I would like those who are my friends to stand up with me and to be of assistance to me. In that particular case, I should also be from amongst those who stands up for his friends when they are in need. May the Almighty help us to help one another. My brothers and sisters, Islam is a religion of assisting one another. Whereas others on the globe today, they teach and promote selfishness and miserliness. Everyone is living for themselves. Everyone is interested in how they will benefit. Everyone wants to reach out to what will be theirs and theirs alone. People are such that they don't even want to share things with their own family members. This is the world and this is where it has taken us. Whereas Islam and this beautiful religion of ours teaches us the exact opposite. You would like to achieve the happiness of the Almighty? Learn to share what you have. Teach your children to share what they have from a very early age. Tell them about the benefits of sharing and tell them how the more they share, the more they will get because the owner is Allah. The one who gave it to you is the one who will multiply it. And this is why the Almighty has stated in the Quran, وَمَا تُقَدِّمُوا لِأَنفُسِكُمْ مِنْ خَيْرٍ تَجِدُوهُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ هُوَ خَيْرًا وَأَعْظَمَ أَجْرًا وَاسْتَغْفِرُوا اللَّهَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ Whatever you have put forth, whatever you have deposited, whatever you have given forward, for yourselves, it will benefit you. You will find it with Allah. It will be multiplied. It will be much benefit. Seek forgiveness of Allah. For indeed, He is most forgiving, most merciful. Beloved brothers and sisters, be conscious of the Almighty and be conscious of the fact that He has created you and He is the one in absolute control of every aspect of your existence and mine and in every aspect of the creation at large. 
and be conscious of the fact that you are becoming older as the days pass and not younger and be conscious of the fact that Allah can take you away right now so therefore be conscious of death and be conscious of the preparation for that day when you will meet your maker for indeed every one of us is going to meet our maker and he will question us as to how and what we did during our short stint in this particular life so remember the object is not this life but the object is pre preparing for the everlasting life never lose focus upon that because it is definitely a loser and a person who is in the clutch of shaitan who will lose focus upon the fact that they are going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I will meet my maker and so will you and we will see him and we will definitely be questioned about everything many of us may have done things we would like to delete from our slate my brothers and sisters I give you good news whatever you have done is very deletable it is that which we would be able to delete through what is known as repentance and tawbah brothers and sisters we need to admit where we are wrong we need to admit what we have done when it is wrong and we need to understand we must regret our wrongdoings and we should ask the Almighty for forgiveness and we should promise not to do it again with those conditions we are able to delete whatever we have done we can smile once again and prepare to the to the meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the day when we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so be conscious of where you are and where you are heading and be conscious of the fact that at any moment the Almighty can have written my demise and yours death would only be a suffering for those who have led an evil life but as for the believer the messenger peace be upon him says death is actually a gift because now he gets to where he was supposed to get to and this is why it is important for us whilst we prepare ourselves for that big day we help others prepare for the day as well those who are under your authority my brothers and sisters it is your duty placed on your shoulders by the Almighty to create for them an environment whereby they will not lose focus and they will know why they are in this world this world we have not been placed in it in order to amass without an end but in order to collect so that we can help ourselves and others so how many of us have helped others and how many of us have given portions of our wealth to those in need when we look at the lives of the companions of the Prophet may peace be upon him and may Allah be pleased upon all of them they gave at times everything they owned in order to serve the cause of the deen and they gave sometimes 50% which is half of what they owned sometimes we cannot even give two and a half percent of our savings without counting 20 times as to whether this figure is correct because it seems too large may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not make us from those may we be from the generous may we be from amongst those whom when we give that wealth will return to us in goodness in this world and the next may we be from amongst those whom when we give we do not expect clout in return we give for the sake of Allah we do not give because we want to have a say or control people and we do not give because we want to show people that we have rather we give in order to please the Almighty and to set an example for the others who can perhaps learn that we give and we give for the sake of the Almighty and if you see us giving and it encourages you to give we will earn a reward as well it is very important that we send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained that for us as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has instructed us all in Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma fasalli wa sallim wa barik wa an'im ala abdika wa rasulika muhammadin afdali al-khalqi afdali al-khalqi wa akram al-rusuli warda Allahumma an khulafaihi al-rashidin al-a'imma al-mahdiyin abi bakrin wa umara wa uthmana wa ali Allahumma arda anhum wa an sa'iri al-sahabati wa al-tabi'in wa anna ma'ahum bimannika wa karamika ya akram al-akram 